You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Avers. Today's topic, new treatment options for people that are suffering with sleep apnea. And in the second half of the program, it's what every parent needs to know about their child and how they're sleeping or not sleeping. Maybe contributing to an airway problem, according to my first guest, could be contributing to ADHD, ADD, and a lot of other health issues. With us, we have an expert on the topic. I've read his book, Stop the Snore, Dr. Eugene Cemetery. Dr. Cemetery, yeah, welcome ready. to the program. Yeah, thank you very much. This is exciting to be here and get the word out. All right, good. Great book, by the way. Oh, and thank I told you. you. Very easy reading. Yeah. So I know you don't have a typical patient, but who is the typical patient that you see for sleep problems? These are patients that generally, as an adult, they're, they're led to our practice from the wife or the spouse claiming they have a problem. They're in denial, but they're suffering from daytime sleepiness. They're having difficulty at work. You know, they're falling asleep as soon as they get home or after dinner. These are the patients that have tried CPAP maybe, or they refuse to try CPAP, and they've been unsuccessful. So they come to us for other options. Okay. And we also will see children that have similar problems. This is also becoming a very dominant thing in the, in the children's illness is they're dealing with sleep problems also. Is that right? Okay, so now at the second half of the show, we're going to go over specific things that you can do to really identi identify at home if your kids are having a problem with sleep. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, with their airway? Yes, yes. Uh, so Stop the Snore is your book. So at the top of the show, we said, you know, new treatment options for people that are wearing CPOP. How big of a problem is sleep apnea? Well, if you read the statistics, it says 40% of the population. I believe it's much higher. There's okay. so many people in denial. And when we talk about sleep apnea, we're really talking about a specific type of sleep problem. That means they actually stop breathing during the night. Okay. okay? So, but there are other people that have something called upper airway resistance, where they're just not breathing properly. And we know a lot of people have insomnia, so it, it covers a lot. But sleep apnea is probably the most detrimental because it can not only create chronic issues, but also acute things like a sudden heart attack or a stroke. Okay, now, we should mention, you're not against CPAP. You agree that it works, no. but you say... A lot of people just can't wear them or don't like to wear them. Yeah. I don't, I don't, well, would, would you want to? I don't think. I, don't think I know so, right? I wouldn't. I don't know who, I forget the comedian who said that uh, CPAP was actually the perfect birth control apparatus. So, okay. Yeah. So about 30% of the people that get them wear them. And I would say most of those. So 70% just don't wear they, them. They won't wear it. They refuse to wear it. Some of them actually get one, never wear it. Uh, I mean, there's been, uh, you know, we know people like Judge Scalia. He died in a sleep, heart attack. His CPAP machine was right next to his bed. Is so it right? could have saved his life. They will not wear it. 30% that do are probably very severe sleep apnea patients, overweight, and they really have to, if they don't do that, their life is in danger. But now you say 7%. these people, okay, so sleep apnea. You say these people think they're sleeping, but they're not. And that's why they wake up exhausted. They don't even Tell me realize. Help me understand this. Well, we know that the brain works funny when, when we're sleeping. One thing that happens during that period is an amnesic effect. So they wake up, and the wife or the spouse, I keep saying the wife, because women snore and, and have sleep apnea also, but the spouse will say, you were snoring all night. He said, no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. No, you were snoring. No, I wasn't. Okay. So it goes back and forth. They don't remember. They don't remember that they were gasping for air. This is what typically brings the patient in. The spouse is fearing for their life. They're sitting there watching their spouse get their, take their last breath. And of course, what's happening? They're not sleeping either. So yeah. this is a serious issue. You say they sleep in different rooms. 35% of married couples sleep in separate rooms because of this issue. Is that right? Yeah. It's just so noisy. It's so noisy. Even a recent research says there's auditory changes that occur due to the decibel level from snoring. So you can actually have hearing loss if your spouse snores. Okay, now you say people are waking up like four or five or even 30, 40 times in one hour. In one hour. Is that right? Yeah. And is that possible? <laughs> it's very possible. It doesn't seem like it, especially when they don't remember it. So they're laying in bed for nine hours, but maybe they only slept an hour. Yeah, we had this young man. Well, I said young, he's in his 50s. For me, he's young. So okay. uh, he came into the office and said, you know, I was out on a family trip and they, and they recorded me while I was sleeping. He's, he's not married. He's single. He doesn't know. They recorded him snoring in the middle of the night. Okay. I, we, we were like, hey, you need to get this checked out. We had to do him a home sleep study. He stopped breathing 86 times per hour for a minimum of 10 seconds or more. Sometimes he held his breath for as much as a minute and a half. So when they're not sleeping, you say a lot of problems happen. Like well, what? Probably the most common thing, daytime sleepiness. Can't okay. stay awake at work. 
falling asleep while you're driving. Do you know that more accidents occur from drowsy driving than from drinking alcohol? Okay. okay. This is a serious danger. And look at all the major commercial indus industrial accidents that occurred. Chernobyl, uh, Five Mile Island, uh, the, the Valdez. I mean, all these were after midnight. People were falling asleep. So okay. they're, not, they're not functioning at their highest end. They can't because they're not getting the proper deep sleep or REM sleep that's required for our body to regenerate. And this can be fixed, right, by opening up their airway with a custom-made, I don't want to make this too simplistic, but a, like a custom-made appliance that opens up their airway. Yes. Is that one of the, one of the yeah. ways you do it? So that's one of the ways we do it. So I, let me just go back for a second. Three options. One, CPAP. We already talked about that. Not a great alternative. Two, what, and this is no criticism, but most dentists that are treating sleep are making some kind of appliance that pulls their jaw forward. They call it mandibular advancement appliance. It works because it's bringing the jaw forward, the tongue's attached to the jaw, it brings it out of the back of the throat, okay. opens up the airway. What that means is they're going to have to wear this appliance the rest of their life. Okay. Recent studies have also shown because we're putting pressure by bringing the upper jaw forward against the upper, upper jaw, that long term we are affecting the airway and making it worse. Okay. So here's our solution. So you're not a fan then of that particular no. just opening up the airway? No. Okay. I'm a fan of a CPAP and that if they won't move forward with any other treatment because it does save their life. It does get air. Okay. We got to have oxygen. That's about, let's, let's get that straight. We don't realize how important that is. We, we spend a lot of money on exercise and now we're all, you know, all these food, nutrition fads and taking supplements. If we're not breathing. We're not sleeping. We're not developing the proper detoxification of the brain. So it leads to Alzheimer's. We're having cardiovascular issues because we stop breathing. It causes these release of cortisol and epinephrine has a major effect on our In your book, you system. say it like raises stress hormones. Raises stress hormones. So when cortisol. you don't sleep, you have problems. Yeah. So this may be why you're feeling like you're dragging. You have brain fog. You're dragging through the day because you've been working out all night. You're in that sympathetic state we call fight or flight. Okay. You're, you're not supposed to be in fight or flight. Fight I, or flight. I mean, we all know what it's like to not sleep. Oh. You feel lousy. Yeah. You overeat. You're not in the mood to do anything. You're not patient with the kids. Yeah. You're not patient with anybody. No. We, <laughs> so you see reversals in this. People that were one way and now they're not. Uh, I, I mean, it, when you say that, Randy, I think that this man, he was in his 50s, really having difficulty. Uh, even his, his fellow, fellow employees were complaining. He was not at his best. He came in, his wife dragged him in there. He didn't want to believe that he had a problem. At the time that we took the impression for the appliance, we moved his jaw into a forward position. In the chair, he said, I can breathe better. Is that right? Within two weeks, when he came back to the follow-up, okay, sleeping through the night, his fellow employees couldn't believe, they wanted to know what happened. <laughs> okay. He was going to the gym now, working out, and his blood sugar levels dropped to the point where he's now off his diabetic medicine. Okay. That's amazing. And that's just from some simple piece of a plastic put in the patient's mouth. And it's just that simple. If we can open up the airway and get oxygen into the system, that's what we're meant for. Now, now these people, okay, so most of them, I mean, they think they're breathing okay throughout the day. But then when they sleep, what? Their jaw, their tongue is what? Dropping back? Well, typically, it's exactly what happens. So they may already have structurally a narrow airway. And we look at these things on things like a 3D comb beam x-ray. So we can see that in the office. And we already know right away. We look in the back of the throat, and you can't see the back of the throat because the base of the tongue is just clogging it. So what happens when you go from a vertical position to a horizontal position? And gravity takes place. It's blocking the tongue. Now, if there's a partial blockage, that's what snoring's about. So you're going to hear that. Snoring, okay, okay? okay? When it completely blocks, that's an apneic event. They stop breathing completely. And they're not even aware of it. All they're aware is that I'm tired, I'm groggy. You know, you have all these other comorbidities, depression, erectile dysfunction, diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia. So every week you see reversals we in see these reversals. type of symptoms. Absolutely, is absolutely. Right? We see amazing, and I, and I don't wanna say this is a panacea, but I think from the medical perspective, we got to rule it out. So whatever else is going on with that patient, even if they have some other kind of disease or illness, sleep is going to make it better. Sleep yeah. and breathing is going to help. Whatever. Whether they have Lyme disease or an autoimmune disease or even cancer, it's going to help now, them. Now, some people come to you just for snoring. 
uh, just for maybe sleep apnea, they can't wear their, their CPAP. And all they care about is the noise. But then you fix them up, open their airway with a custom-made appliance, yeah. then you say a lot of other things happen. That means there's a lot of other benefits aside from just the noise. Tell me about that. Well, they're gonna feel better. The brain fog goes away. They feel more like they're, you know, they're living. You know, they wanna do things. They get to a point when they're not sleeping. They don't wanna go out, they don't wanna socialize. They're not progressing well in their job. I mean, everything sort of goes down. How does weight loss play into this? Because you say that they will lose weight when you get them sleeping again. Well, you talked a little bit about the hormone changes. So there's two hormones, and I don't want to get too technical, leptin and ghrelin. So ghrelin, I think of ghrelin, you know, you're hungry. So that, that makes you hungry. So when you're not sleeping, you produce more ghrelin and less leptin. Leptin is the appetite suppressor. Okay. So, so if you're not sleeping, what do you do during the day when you're tired? What do you reach for? Food. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Sugar. <laughs> right? Yeah. You need that sugar or caffeine. So take me through the pro and we're gonna get to kids, because I think the, the kids stuff you have and you have photos is really incredible, whatever parent needs to know about that. But take me through your protocol. Okay, so a person comes in, they're a loud snorer, they wanna stop that. You say that's an easy one to fix. Or maybe they have been diagnosed with sleep apnea, but they can't wear their device. What happens in your practice? Well, first, it's an educational process, and that is how I came up with the name of the, of the book, Stop the Snore. Because there are devices that you can buy online, on the web, anti-snoring appliances. Here's the problem. If you stop the snore, but you have not addressed their sleep apnea, you could actually make their problem worse. But you don't know it. Okay. Because the snoring is actually an alarm system. Okay. What keeps the spouse tugging and pushing on this because they're snoring? Now suddenly they're not snoring, but they're not breathing. The, sp uh, the spouse may not even know that. So we really discourage using these over-the-counter okay. devices. So we want to address the root cause. So we're going to do a sleep study for them. We want to find out like what's an at-home sleep study. You can do it at home, or you can go to a sleep center. The, okay. the at-home are much more favorable. You're sleeping in your own bed. We get a lot of data from that. You know, metrics are very important. We want to know. I don't want to just guess that you have sleep. So apnea. this will tell you how much they're sleeping that night. Yes. Yes. So it also gives us a baseline. So if we're gonna do the treatment, we have a way to measure, is the treatment actually making a difference? Even though subjectively we know, they come in, I feel better, I have more energy, I'm going to the gym, I've never felt this good, and, and, and it happens quickly. It's amazing how So it doesn't quickly. take a long time to start feeling better? No. So when you get this sleep study, so it tells you what? Like how much oxygen they're getting, how many hours sleep they're getting? Like it may say yeah. two hours. It'll tell you total amount of sleep, It'll tell you how many, how many hours you're awake, Okay. how long it takes you to fall asleep. It'll take you, show you how much we call delta sleep or deep sleep, which is restorative sleep. So that's when the body, if you have chronic pain and you're not getting deep sleep, you're never going to get better. Okay. Okay. And then you get REM sleep. That's where the brain detoxifies itself. We consolidate memories. So we have dreams. If you don't have that, you're not going to also produce growth hormones. So a lot of things happening in this time when actually the brain is very active during REM sleep. It's very active. It's the same activity as when you're awake. The only difference is your body's paralyzed. Okay. Otherwise you might act out your dreams and that's not a good thing. So, so lots happening during that. So we want to see what actually is occurring before we make any diagnosis or we make any recommendation. Okay. So, but here's the problem. A sleep study is not always accurate. We always start with the anatomy even before because that's usually where we start to believe that there's a problem. Okay. So, so there's an indication. So if we look, look on a CAT scan, a 3D cone so beam. So you take a cone beam of what? We're, ta airway? we're taking of the whole way from the shoulder up. Okay. So we're looking at the airway, we're looking at the TMJ, we're looking at the nasal passages. We want to see what's going on. Are the nasal passages blocked? They can't breathe. If they're not breathing through their nose, they've got to breathe through their mouth. Is the airway, so we can see three-dimensionally, is it narrow? So we kind of know from studies what a narrow airway versus a ideal one. It still doesn't tell us. And, we, I, and I always say anatomy doesn't dictate physiology. So okay. we see a narrow airway, we see nasal patches, blah. Let's do a test. Let's see what's actually going on while you're sleeping because that's the most important thing. We already kind of know, but we got we to document it. And also, unfortunately, for medical purposes and medical insurance, you can't get reimbursement unless you've done one of these studies. Okay. So... The problem is, it will tell you if you have sleep apnea, but it won't tell you if you don't have sleep apnea. And the reason is that the indicator for sleep apnea is that you stop breathing for a minimum of 10 seconds. So if you stop breathing for 10 seconds, one time an hour, 
that's called an AHI, apnea hypopnea index of one. You have to have a score of five to say that you have sleep apnea, mild sleep apnea. Are you seeing a lot of fives? We see, I see 60s and 70s. Oh, wow. These are severe sleep apnea. And but they can here, be fixed? And they can still be fixed. Okay. Yeah. I have a patient who came in, she's on a CPAP. She started wearing an appliance. She was doing both. Okay. Wearing the CPAP and wearing the appliance. You saw her AHI number go down. Phenomenal. She started in the 30s. She's now not wearing her CPAP and doesn't even have to wear the appliance. She has an AHI of zero. It's phenomenal. I mean, you hardly ever see it go down to that low. So what that means to her and the people around her, she's got more energy. She's on fire. Okay. She can't be stopped. She feels so amazing. She wants to go on vacation. She wants to go out to dinner. She wants to socialize. She stops They tell all you that. this on the console, like, oh my goodness, I have all the energy back. Yeah. And it's like, really? I mean, sometimes I have a hard time believing it. Okay. I think maybe it's placebo, but it's not. Okay. Because I hear okay. it over and over again. But she's a different person. And now she's not even needing to wear the appliance. She is so happy. She is thrilled to death. So sometimes patients are not willing to give up the CPAP, and sometimes it doesn't make sense. Okay. But we can do what's called hybrid therapy. So we're doing an appliance, a mandibular advancement appliance, and a CPAP machine. Now, do you do dental work, too? We can sometimes. do dental work. Oh, yeah. We can't. And in what cases do you need to do dental work and the custom-made appliance? Well, if they, if they have dental needs, we can't ignore those. All right. We're not going to say, right. okay, you know what, we're going we're gonna to address your sleep apnea, but don't worry about that cavity. Don't worry about your, <laughs> don't worry about your bleeding gums. I guess that's obvious. <laughs> yeah, we've got to address that. But here's what we do different, is we make appliances that address the three-dimensional. We call them 3D expansion appliances. All right. So, and that's what this patient had that we just talked about. She got a 3D appliance. We expanded her width, we expanded her depth, and we expanded her her height. So we made more room. So it's sort of like parking your car in a garage so small that you can't open the door to get out. Okay. You got to open a window to crawl, crawl out. I know what that's like. Yeah. So the tongue is housed in the mouth. So it's all about the tongue. So when you open that up, we make more room for the tongue. We reteach patients where to put their tongue. We call it tongue posture. That helps get the tongue out of the back of the throat. And guess what? They're not only breathing better while they're asleep, they're breathing better during the day. So they're more effective in all their athletic performance. They go to the gym, they're working better. If, they, if they're a runner, they're breathing better. You know, if you look at some of the uh, Olympic uh, races, you'll see the people that have come in first, usually the Kenyans, their mouths are closed. The person in third, mouth is open. Okay. <laughs> they're breathing through their mouth. It, it's like you said, it, it releases cortisol and epinephrine, puts you in that sympathetic state. So if you're in a sympathetic state, your heart's beating faster. So, so these people become healthier because I guess if you're not sleeping also, you start aging faster, you say. Yeah, absolutely. We know all the comorbidities that we mentioned, but also aging factor. And you see this in people. You see pooling under the eyes. You start to see a lot of wrinkles. Yeah, they're aging fast. They're not sleeping. Okay, let's move on to kids for a moment. Okay, so parents watching this, how do you know if your kid has a sleep problem? Well, some are, it's very obvious, because they'll come in, they'll, they'll say, hey, you know, my kid's snoring. Is that, and they'll say, is that normal? I said, no, it's not normal. It's glad you brought him in. What other things are occurring? Whether well, they're struggling in school. And, the, and, I, and I, in the morning, I see their beds all wrestled up, because they're just restless throughout the whole night. Uh, when I go in there, I hear them grinding their teeth. Is any is of that, that okay? Right? Yeah, because they'll say, you know, I talked to another dentist, they said they'll just outgrow that. That's totally untrue. Uh, they may outgrow that and develop something else, but it's a serious problem that needs to be addressed as soon as possible. We can now treat children as young as the age of two. So we want to make sure that we are stimulating the growth and development of the jaws so we don't end up with adults that have obstructive sleep apnea and other sleep and breathing issues because of the comorbidities that occur with that. So why not go downstream instead of the increase in health care costs for adults is astronomical. If we can address this, and this is what makes me so passionate, we can help these children. And they're suffering from ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, hyperactivity, poor social skills. I mean, they're aggressive. You know, my kid's aggressive. Well, yeah. Why is that? Well, I'm not sure why. Because they're not sleeping. So it's no different than an adult. I mean, if you don't get sleep, you're edgy the next day. So if kids aren't sleeping because their airway is a little bit blocked, they're going to be 
not in the mood to learn the next day at school. Yeah. Their is brain that, I mean, can't, is that right? They're, yeah, their not, brain's not prepared. So we see this in children. It's, it's become an epidemic. Okay. And what are, the, what are the results of this? I mean, some of this is, yeah, we're going to have better smiles and maybe they don't need braces. But we're addressing their ADD. These kids are on medication. This is the standard treatment for ADD. I'm seeing kids that are being taken off their ADD medication. Is that amazing? So okay. they don't have to be drugged for the rest of their life. I'm seeing kids who stop bedwetting, and I could relate to that. Just by uh, opening up their airway, by, getting them back to get sleep? Get them the breathing, yeah. Okay. So, I, yeah, I know we, we talked about that earlier. We're like, what, what does that have to do with it? Well, when you're not sleeping, you're in that sympathetic state. The bladder, what happens when you're in a scared situation? What? We want to release ourselves, right? So this is what's happening to kids. What a psychosocial phenomena that's occurring that these kids don't have to deal with. So we're having kids come in. Now they're not... So now they can go spend the night at their friend's house. They're starting to have more friends. Uh, I've seen kids that, you know, improved them, ADD. Kids are going from D students to A students. You've had learning. these patients. Yes. Yes, we see this all the time. They're improving in school. Their social skills are better. They're less aggressive. My kid used to, you know, I had patients. Their kid used to beat up other kids. They don't do that anymore. All these phenomena that we're right. giving kids drugs to address these issues when all we need to do is get them to breathe, which then will allow them to sleep. Okay, good. Now, so they just wear a little custom-made appliance for them, the yes. kid, yeah. yes. opens it up, and it starts working right away, or it takes some time? We use uh, a series of appliances. We start all our kids off on something called a habit corrector, because they have bad habits. They're not swallowing properly. They're breathing through their mouth. That's another thing. If you see your child breathing through their mouth at night, if you and you hear them, so they're breathing, laying there with their mouth open. With their mouth open. That's bad. Yeah. Really? You see them. We see this all the time. You see a kid like that. They've got an airway issue. Okay. So it's not even why that they're may only get worse. It's only going to get worse. So you could correct it with an appliance. Yeah. So we correct that first, and then we put in what's called guidance appliances. Okay. So we want to stimulate the jaws to grow in a way that will allow the teeth to come in. And here's the real benefit. Besides addressing ADD, ADHD, all these other issues, making these kids socially more adaptive to what's going on. Because, okay. you know, kids are cruel. So we're going to improve their bite. I mean, we've all know there's kids that had overbites, right, or other issues that got picked on at school. That's going to go away. Now, you brought photos yeah. uh, that we looked at in the green room. Yeah. What are we looking at here? So here's a child who came to my office. The Let mom, me take a look. The mom was very concerned. So notice that in that picture there, the lower teeth sit outside of the upper teeth. This okay. is totally backwards. Underbite. It's called an underbite. Okay. So uh, where typically, in most cases, we see the opposite, where they have like uh, overjet or overbite, or we call buck teeth. So here's just the opposite. The mom's concerned. They want to put the child in braces and told her that that's only the beginning of the treatment. When he's a teenager, we're going to have to break his jaw. So we're talking about cutting the jaw, sliding the jaw forward, okay? moving this jaw out, moving this jaw backwards to, to correct that from this to this. Okay. So now you've had experience, right, with a child who... My own had, son had yeah. uh, this kind of a problem with yeah. surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, who would want to put their child through it that? It is torturous. They don't eat for like three weeks. Yeah, you got to like drink through a Liquid. straw. Yeah. yeah. So here's the, here's the worst thing so about that. So this kid, when you look at this, you can do this with an appliance, not surgery. This child, within less than two months, went from this underbite to a normal bite. You can see in the this second picture. This is it picture. right here. You can okay. see in the second picture. That's less than two months with this appliance. That was going to require orthodontics, probably two or three years of orthodontics. I'm talking about braces. And then some type of orthodontic surgery as a teenager. Was he having any airway problems? He was having sleep problems, a little restlessness. Um, didn't have ADD. He actually was doing okay in school. A lot of sort of hyperactivity action. So all that has changed. So we're not just talking about an anatomical change. It has changed his life. And, and just imagine what would have happened if he had to be in braces. How would that affect his life? And then go in surgery as a teenager. So the opposite's true. So you could have a big overbite, and, and that could also be blocking your airway, keeping you from sleeping? Yes, kid? because here's the, here's the problem. And that would not have been addressed with surgery. It would have cut the jaw, moved this back. What he really needs, this needs to come forward. When you move the jaw behind here, it's trapping the tongue. So not only would they have tortured this young child with this surgical procedure, they could have made him a sleep apneic patient for life.
So if, if a parent's watching this and they see an overbite, underbite, and their kids are having problems in school, this may be affecting their airway. Absolutely. And they're not sleeping very well. They're not sleeping. So you do sleep studies on a little kid, an at-home test, yes. find out they're only sleeping like two, three hours a night? Well, does that ever we happen? Yes, we find that their sleep is, is fragmented, so they're waking up, they're not getting into deep sleep, and they're not sleeping soundly, so they're not getting REM sleep either, they're not dreaming. So they're obviously not good in school the next day. They're not gonna be, I, I mean, you've had a night where you didn't sleep, right? How'd you feel the next day? Terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I don't feel good when I'm, and I'm not, my employees know when I haven't had a good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, nobody's in a good mood uh, yeah. after no sleep. Okay, so wrapping this up, so to the parent with a kid that's having problems in school, you're saying it's possible he's not sleeping. Like the covers are all messed up because he's tossing and turning. He's sleeping with his mouth open, you mentioned. Overbite, underbite, or lots of dental problems. Uh, and then the adult that can't wear the CPAP or the chronic snorer, or they've been diagnosed, they all could be their potential ideal candidates for this therapy. Yes. All right, so what, so what do you say? Somebody's watching this and they've heard what you had to say, but they're still afraid or skeptical or whatever, or they can't wrap their mind around a dentist is gonna treat this? What do yes. you say to them? I hear that all the time. Why would a dentist understand that? Fortunately, the medical community is coming around. They're sending us more patients. They're starting to understand, Good. especially the pediatrician, because what are they doing? They're sending these kids for tonsillectomies and adenectomies. They don't need these. Sometimes they just need to open up the airway, develop the jaws. So we are seeing a change and in a, in a, in an acceptance of what we're doing. But you got to get your child in at least evaluated. Okay. These parents know their children have an issue. They don't want their children to develop these problems. They want to address them in a non-surgical and non-pharmacological way. All right. So we can deal with that. Yeah, but what about those adults that say, I tried appliance therapy for my sleep apnea. Did not work. Well, I'd want to know what that appliance, how long ago was it? What kind of appliance? We have different appliances today. We're using much smaller appliances. And the thing is that they have to be compliant. Did the child actually wear it? What kind of appliance? So. I would say give it another try. And the adults, but the adults. You say the appliances are better today. They're oh, smaller, more comfortable. Yeah, in both the adults and for children. I mean, so. even the appliances of like four years ago, totally different? Yes. I mean, if, if you never experienced that, but I did, and they're bulky, they're uncomfortable, and I, so I understood personally why someone wouldn't want to wear that. Okay, good. Well, we're out of time. I want to thank you for coming on the show. So your book, Stop the Snore, they could go to your website, pick up a, a, a book there. I think if anybody reads this book, you're sold. I mean, it was yeah. good. Very Thank you. informative. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that was a purpose. This is, I'm excited about this. I'm glad I could be here. I just really want to get the word out. I want to help children. So it's a free consultation? Free consultation. If somebody wants to come in, get evaluated, and could you pretty much tell the adult or the parent, the child, if they're a good candidate or not? I can on tell. On day one? I, I, just looking at them, I can usually tell. Okay. And we do do a questionnaire, so sometimes, quite, I mean... It's obvious. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good well, stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. You've been watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.